Ali. Uh, I'm an archaeologist uh, at the uni here. I'm going to tell you about the Mesolithic, the greatest period in prehistory that you've never heard of. <laughs> Literally translates as the Middle Stone Age. Um, begins with the end of the last Ice Age, 10,000 years ago. The Ice Age where we have all sorts of exciting things going on, such as <coughs> mammoths and uh, cave bears and hyenas and uh, cave lions, woolly rhinoceroses and all Sid and Manny's friends. They're all dead. <laughs> they're all gone. Forget them. They're all the exciting things that happened in the early Stone Age, the Paleolithic. We're moving on from then. The climate has warmed up, as Matthew's shown us with all these wheels. And we're between then and the period when agriculture has arrived, where we have, from the Near East, domesticated grain, sheep, pigs, goats, cows, all these exciting things that you need to make sheep, uh, to lamb, wool, cheese, bread. And the things that come with these, polished stone axes, these incredibly beautiful things, and <coughs> pottery. These are the, thing, the, the material culture, that archaeologists call them, that you need to process those domesticated goods into uh, the goods that you need to, as an agriculturalist to live. But the Mesolithic is 6,000 years. It's half the time between now and the last ice age. We, all the other stuff in archaeology that you've ever heard of fits into the other 6,000 years. It covers vast swathes of Europe. It's obviously a name that archaeologists have come up with. Nobody's ever said, I'm Mesolithic. But we also see here the coverage of the last ice age at its height 18,000 years ago. And that's important because when all that ice disappears, it melts and sea levels rise. Before that, Britain, at the beginning of the Mesolithic, is joined to the continent. There's an area called Doggerland, which is now the North Sea, where probably the best place to live during the Mesolithic was there. We've got a fantastic environment with willow, birch, alder, hazel trees, thick forests, and people living quite sophisticated lives in this forest um, with animals that mostly we'd be familiar with. Red deer, brown bear, beaver, wolf, and then plants that we're familiar with as well. They are, they're harvesting water lily, um, what else? Uh, hazelnuts in vast quantities roasting hazelnuts. They've got quite sophisticated ways of processing these. Drying fish, making boats. Uh, they, it's the first period where we have the bow and arrow and the domesticated dog um, <coughs> and living in shelters which are increasingly uh, sophisticated ways of, of occupying landscapes seasonally for great period, long periods of time. We also have hints of ritual behaviour. We've got these deer skulls on posts here. This is a Mesolithic house up near Howick, up on the Northumberland coast. This one is occupied for more than 200 years. People are coming back here, on and off perhaps, for more than 200 years. And it's a hell of a house. It goes from here to the far side of the stage, big round house. We also know that their relationships with animals are quite sophisticated. These are red deer skull caps, stag skull caps, which have, the antlers have been modified and the um, skull cap has been modified to wear on your head. Whether this is a hunting disguise, we don't know. <coughs> what they do with their dead people is quite weird. Quite cool, but quite weird. They're, this is a uh, Teviak out uh, near, in Brittany. One of these graves has, and several of them, have bones removed from them, including ribs, taken around the landscape for several decades and then put back in other people's graves. But most of that evidence, for the Mesolithic period in these tiny flints. This is called a microlith. Literally, those are fingertips. Um, and we find all these different kinds of microliths, and nerdy people argue about the different kinds of forms of measuring them for hours and hours. It doesn't matter. What they are used for is modular tools. You can take a microlith and it's like a Swiss army knife. You can use it in uh, an arrowhead, you can use it in a spear, a knife, whatever you like. What we have to do is, at site level, interpret them in great detail. All the different coloured dots are different kinds of tools. And all the black dots are all the waste flakes. Flints are reductive technology. This is what a site like that one that you just saw. We have to 3D every little piece of flint that we find. This is the oldest structure in Britain, two weeks before we found it. 
Um, that's, that's how we have to deal with it. And my takeaway point for this is that there's lots of headaches that we have, things that Matthew thinks about and stuff like that, which are uh, incredibly data intense. But the imagination that we need to bring the Mesolithic to life is as real in you as it is in any of the archaeologists. And we need you. So I've broken the pitching rules. Come and talk to me afterwards. <laughs>